Good evening and welcome to the week 12 lecture video. Let me go ahead and share the agenda with you. Okay, here you go. Uh, once again, as we do at the start of every class, let's go over the course organization. So again, we're taking the three pronged approach to research method. The first prong is theory. You're getting this theory by reading the textbook and us going over the quizzes in these lecture videos. SPSS, this is again, an important uh, uh, statistical software. And I, I think some of you have used it before. And if not, uh, you've had a chance to see numerous SPSS lecture videos that are related to some of the analyses that uh, were done for your results section. And again, uh, the point here, and I, I sent an email and I posted an announcement. What you need to remember is, okay, you go to the data file for your results section, right? You find your analyses. If you're staring at the SPSS output and you're confused, you go straight to the lecture videos, okay? Those will enlighten you about, you know, how to read them, like which one's the correlation, which one's the p-value, et cetera. And then from there, you could look at the results writing templates that I gave you and then fill in the blanks, okay? But again, that was the whole point of uh, you looking at these SPSS lecture videos is, you know, if, you, if you've never been acquainted with SPSS, uh, the, the point of the videos uh, were to, uh, the, the point was rather to get you acquainted with SPSS, okay? Prong three, research paper. So these lectures are part of that. Uh, the discussion forums are having you write a piece of your research paper every single week, and then other assignments being the rough drafts. Uh, you're getting a lot of feedback from me, and I ask you to resubmit for full credit. You resubmit, I might give you uh, more feedback, right? Uh, and, and if I do, I'll ask you to resubmit again, or I'll give you 100% and we can move on. But the fact of the matter is through you, you know, writing a little bit of your paper every week and us going back and forth on the rough drafts, uh, you're getting the feedback that you need to come up with a very uh, solid product at the end. And, and there's a very high likelihood that if, if, you're, if you're diligent uh, in, in making the changes and asking questions, there's a very high probability that you'll get 100% on the final paper. Okay, so uh, the week 11 discussion was you writing the results section of your paper, okay? So when we look at the results rough draft, and we'll look at that later, basically, you know, all you're doing is you're, you're taking that week 11 discussion post and, you know, you're copying and pasting it and submitting it as your results rough draft. I would ask you though, you know, to make changes if you see changes. So I'm giving you feedback on a fully updated product. Before you get the feedback regarding your results section, this week I'm giving you feedback regarding your methods rough draft. And I'll give this to you by Friday, okay? We'll shoot for 11.59 p.m., hopefully sooner, but that's the deadline I'm giving myself just to keep the process moving. And what I'll do, I'll send you an email when I'm done giving you feedback as assignment comments, just so you know to look for them. Okay, so what's the next part of the research paper we're going to focus on? It is the tables and the figures uh, section of the research paper, okay? And why are we talking about tables and figures now? They're highly related to the results section. So let's go ahead and review some of the templates. First of all, let me show you where these templates are. Here, let me share my screen. <clears throat> so if you go to files, week 12, right? That's where we are. And then go to tables and figures example, you'll see a document, a dot doc, okay, and an Excel file. So let's go over the, the Word file first.
Okay. Now, if one of your analyses is a correlation, then you have to create a correlation table. So how are you going to point to this correlation table? Okay. You're going to add this, okay, parenthetical statement, so statement in parentheses, at the end of your results paragraph that is a correlation. See table one, for example, uh, for descriptive statistics and correlations among, and this is three variables here, age, gender, and self-esteem, but maybe yours is just gender and support for same-sex marriage or self-esteem and gender. Okay, so, so just again, use this as a template, put your variables in, okay? So you can just copy and paste this and mess with it. You might have to take off one column because a lot of you, unless you're dealing with intrinsic and ent extrinsic reality, uh, reality, religiosity, are only going to have two variables, okay? So this has three variables. But, you know, to get, get it down to two variables, you just remove this third column and this third row, okay? But all you're doing here is you're putting the correlation coefficients. So, for example, age, and what's two? Gender. This is a correlation of age and gender, age and self-esteem, which is three. And then this is the correlation of gender and self-esteem, which is three. And then you're adding the mean standard deviation and sample size for each. So for example, the mean for age is 19.09, standard deviation is 1.49, the sample size is 551. Okay, uh, gender doesn't have a mean or a standard deviation because it's a dichotomous variable. It's either one or the other. So you're just reporting the sample size here. And then self-esteem has a mean self uh, <laughs> a mean standard deviation as well as sample size. And all you're doing here is you're putting a note and you're saying the ends were between, okay. And to get these ends for the correlations, you, you just look at what each correlation has. So for example, here's actually, sorry, the data that we're working with. So you see the descriptive statistics we just covered are here, and this is the correlation data. But if you look at the ends, you'll see for gender and age, it's 549. For age and self-esteem, it's 551. For gender and self-esteem, it's 550. So we're saying our ends range from 549 to 551. And we're just defining our variables. Age, higher scores on age indicate being older, lower scores indicate being younger. Gender, high gender means female, low gender means male. So again, it just depends on how it was coded. Self-esteem, uh, high scores mean higher self-esteem, low scores mean lower self-esteem. Then here, so our p-value is 0.161, so p is greater than 0.05, okay? Our p-value here for age and self-esteem is 0 0.002, so p is less than 0 0.05. And our p-value here for gender and self-esteem is 0 0.951, p is greater than 0 0.05, okay? So only one correlation is significant. P is less than 0.05, which is the correlation between age and self-esteem. So 0.134 star. The star means P is less than 0.05. So again, you add this parenthetical statement to the end of the appropriate results paragraph. And then you put this table where it belongs. And it's after the reference section. So, but we'll deal with that later. We'll deal with paper organization later. So that's if you have a correlation, okay? If you have a independent samples t-test, you'll put this parenthetical statement at the end of your independent samples t-test paragraph. See figure one for, see figure one for the, I should say the relationship. I think that would sound better. See figure one for the relationship between gender and self-esteem. And what's plotted here is the x-axis, there's gender, male and female. 
and the y axis, there's the self esteem. So here we have the independent variable on the x axis, and we have the dependent variable, which is self esteem on the y axis. And we just, and, and this is just at the bottom of the figure to label it. Figure one, the relationship between gender and self esteem. And notice the title that we put at the end of our results paragraph, and then the title we actually have for our figure or table, okay, is going to be identical. Okay, so again, here we see, in this case, it doesn't matter if it's significant or non-significant, you're going to graph it, okay? So, here you go. All you really care about are these means. So male self-esteem is 3.17. Female self-esteem is 3.17 in this case. So these are both going to be 3.17. And again, so I have a template for this. So let me go ahead and show you. If we go back to our files, okay? So week 12 table and figure example, you see this table and figure Excel file. Let's take a look at that. So here's the Excel file. And literally, there's a tab that says independent samples t-test. OK? And all you need to do here is you need to change these means. You see that? So I created this nice template for you. So if you change the means, it's going to change these columns. All you have to do is, you know, if your if your independent variable is something different, um, you would just have to change it. So let's say instead of gender, it is. <laughs> um, oh, I think someone's someone's doing uh, Christian versus not Christian. So uh, the the independent variable would would be. Uh, that I'm not exactly sure what to call it at this point, but then you would, you would have a, a Christian uh, mean and then non-Christian mean and then self-esteem or whatever. And then you, you would just change these numbers based on what your output says. Okay. So that's all we need to know for the independent samples T test. So now let's go back to our uh, word document here. And the, the third and final analysis that you may be dealing with is the ANOVA. So once again, if you're dealing with a one-way ANOVA, you need a parenthetical statement, okay? In this case, see table two for ANOVA on ethnicity with regards to self-esteem, okay? If, if you're, here's what we'll do. So you, you have options here. Actually, no. <laughs> okay, so here, here's what I'm gonna do. You could include a table. So this is just the ANOVA table recreated. You could do this, but I think what's more valuable is to actually show the means. So I, don't show this. These are all options, but what, what I would do is Hold on, Where's, where are the, I would focus in on these descriptive statistics, okay? So you see African-American 3.44, self-esteem, Asian-American 3.01 if we round up, uh, Caucasian 3.34 if we round up, Hispanic Latino 3.24, et cetera. So I think what's, what is the most helpful when you're dealing with a one-way ANOVA and what I'm going to require, uh, no matter if it's significant or not significant, I'm going to require that you graph the mean. So here's what you're gonna do. You could, you could do a table, okay, if you want to include that information, but what is required is this, okay? I want you to have a figure and I want you to put this parenthetical statement at the end of your result paragraphs that have to do with one way ANOVA. 
see figure two or whatever. If you already have a figure two, it's called figure three and so on, right? See figure two <clears throat> for ANOVA on ethnicity with regards to self-esteem, okay? And here you can see, here are all the different uh, races, okay? <clears throat> and then this is the independent variable, if you will, ethnicity. And your dependent variable is self-esteem. So literally what's happening here is you're just graphing the, the means, okay? And here's a little note, Tukey's HSD test revealed that, and this is only if there are significant differences. Again, it's possible, you know, when you're looking at the Tukey's HSD that there aren't any significant differences. What do I mean here? If your P is greater than 0.05, then you will not have any significant differences when you look at your Tukey's, okay? But here, for example, we see a difference between Asian Americans and African Americans, Asian Americans and Caucasian, Asian American, Hispanic, Latino, and that's it. So we document those differences. Tukey's Tukey HSD test revealed that Asian Americans, 3.01, tend to have significantly lower self-esteem than African Americans. Okay. And how do we know that Asian Americans have significantly lower self-esteem than African Americans? Well, we literally know that there's a significant difference, but then we just look at the means. Well, Asian Americans are lower than African Americans. So uh, we're saying because P is less than 0.05 in the case of this paired comparison or Tukey's HSD, we're saying that Asian Americans tend to exhibit lower self-esteem than African Americans. Uh, Caucasians. So Asian Americans uh, tend to have significantly lower self-esteem than Caucasians, as well as Hispanic Latinos. Okay. No significant differences among African Americans, Caucasians, Hispanic Latinos, Mexican and others were found. Okay. And you could you could actually make the statement. All other uh, dif differences were not significant, or there there were no other dif differences found. Uh, all P's greater than 0.05, you know, something like that. But again, uh, what if there, there aren't any uh, significant differences? I still want you to graph the means, but just say uh, figure two and just make this note, uh, no significant differences were found <clears throat> among the groups, comma, all P's greater than 0.05. And, and no one, uh, we're not dealing with factorial ANOVA here. But hey, bonus content in the document. So like the independent samples t-test, you can take a look at that Excel file that I already showed you and go to ANOVA. And again, you'll see, you can, you can edit. Oh, well, to, <laughs> my bad. Oh, it's gonna lock up on me. <laughs> In order to edit the groups, you uh, you could change the names here and it'll change in the table. You can change this label, whatever you have. Like uh, maybe you're looking at a religious affiliation, self-esteem or whatever. Okay, you can change that to your dependent variable of interest. Then all you're doing is you're changing these numbers, which will change these means. So again, it's a template, It's it's there to help you. Okay, so once again, everything's located. Uh, files, week 12, tables and figures, examples. You'll see the Word document, the Excel document. And I reference them in, <clears throat> in the assignments. Okay, so, so that's all I have for you regarding tables and figures. So uh, definitely let me know if you, if you have any questions via email or office hours. Let's take a look at what's due on Sunday by 11.59 p.m. So we're looking at the week 12 discussion. So let's take a look at that. Loading, 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 right? There we go. Okay, it says uh, copy and paste your hypotheses once again. I have you do this every time because your hypotheses 
are controlling everything. I, I want you to state one of your findings from your results section and create one table or figure that describes the finding. Be sure to watch this video, the week 12 lecture video before you begin. So literally from your week 11 discussion, take one of your results paragraphs that you like. So let's say you wanna deal with the correlation, pick one of your correlation paragraphs if you have correlation, paste it there. And now use the uh, template use the templates to create either a table or a figure based on what we just discussed. Part three, respond to two other students, compare their table or figure to what you learned in the week 12 lecture video, as well as the relevant templates above. Also, please let them know if something is unclear and if possible, suggest a correction. And again, I really appreciate this peer review process. I've had students email me and say, I have to revise something because uh, people on the discussion board let me know that I was doing it a little wrong. Now I totally get it. I want to do it correctly. So again, that's beautiful. Uh, research is very collaborative. We help each other out. Okay. And that's what you're getting here in these discussions. That's why it's so beautiful, right? So this is your peer review. And then I'm weighing in when it comes to all of the rough drafts. You're getting my expert opinion. We're going back and forth. I'm giving you like Five out of 10, fix this, fix this. Please resubmit for full credit. You resubmit it. Uh, maybe I give you a seven or eight out of 10 up. Oh, almost done, but do this and this. You submit it, I give you full credit. Okay, so that's, that's how the game is being played here. Okay, so again, uh, quiz six topics 56 uh, through 66 in the book. So that's pretty clear. And then the results. Rough draft is the last thing. So we just go to our week 12 module. Oop, it jumped. Sorry, give me one second. Canvas is going slow. Okay. So the instructions for the rough draft, copy and paste your three results section paragraphs here. That is your week 11 discussion post. Remember, you have three hypotheses and one analysis per hypothesis. Here are the analyses, okay? Therefore, you have a total of three analyses. You need one paragraph interpretation for each analysis. Therefore, you need a total of three paragraphs. Follow the relevant templates to construct your three paragraphs. Okay, once again, I want you to submit your most up-to-date work, but really uh, what you're doing here is you're, you're taking your week 11 uh, discussion, okay? And you're copying and pasting it. Re again, revise it, you wanna submit the best work to me, so I give you feedback. You're taking that and you're just pasting it. Okay, so that's what's due Sunday by 11.59 p.m. And again, I want to stress, I want to remind you all that you need to find and create article summaries for the 10 articles you need for the introduction section of your paper. So I'm talking about part two, the literature review section of your introduction section. Okay, you're only required for the rough draft to do three article summaries. For the final paper, you need 10. So don't forget about that, okay? It's a lot of work, okay? And, and that's all I have for you. You know, email me if you have any questions. I'm here for your, your success. I'm, I'm always happy to help. And I know a few of you uh, come to my office hours every single week and, and it's awesome. It's awesome to see you. I wish more people would come. So definitely, uh, take advantage of it. And there you go. My lights, my lights turned off. So that must mean lecture is, is over. But yeah, again, let me know. Let me know if you have any questions. Have a great evening. Take care. Bye.